Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. I like to follow the rules, um, but when you push me into a corner, I'm, I'm going to come out fighting. I mean, I'm not going to lay down and just let somebody roll over me. Uh, I came here to support Jenny and, uh, you know, being open and stuff. Small businesses have been suffering for way too long. And I think that it's time that these businesses get the opportunity to get going. Sheila Gunn-Reed for Rebel News here in beautiful Bonneville, Alberta, continuing my ongoing anti-hunger strike by supporting Alberta restaurants that have chosen to reopen in defiance of the lockdown orders against dine-in service that came down from the provincial government in the middle of December. Now, it was announced on Friday that Alberta restaurants could reopen to reduce capacity on February 8th. Now, the government didn't come to that decision willingly. The government was dragged kicking and screaming to that decision by a groundswell of restaurants from rural Alberta that swung their dining room doors open to customers again at the threat of large fines and shutdown orders from Alberta Health Services. But you know what? When the government has left you with nothing left to lose and you're already closed, what's a fine and a closure notice, right? Jenny's 50s Diner here in Bonneville was one of those restaurants that chose to reopen their doors. Jenny opened her dining room last week to the support of her community and her staff. And then Jenny was immediately hit with threats from Alberta Health Services. And so while she awaits that February 8th reopen date to roll around, she's gone back to takeout only. But she made her point and she played a major role in changing government policy at the potential for great personal and professional cost. So I'm here about two, two and a half hours northeast of Edmonton to show my support for Jenny. Take a look at this super fun restaurant run by a really brave lady. So Jenny, tell me how long you've been in business here. Um, this July will be seven years. And what has business been like up until the pandemic? Um, <laughs> we've had an interesting uh, go here. Um, when we decided to open, the economy was booming. Um, everything was, oil was $120 a barrel. We were good. And shortly after we opened our doors, unfortunately, we all seen the oil crash. And um, so it, it got a little tight. It got a little interesting. And, but we made it through. We made it through our first five years. And that's a milestone in a restaurant. So we thought we were good. And then we have a pandemic, <laughs> which I don't think anybody thought was going to last this long. So the fact that, um, you know, we're still doing this a year later is, uh, it, it's been tough. Um, I thought the first five years were tough, but this last year has probably been a lot worse. Now, if you had to estimate the bite the pandemic took out of your business, what does that look like? Um, we, uh, we're down probably about 80% in sales. So um, everything we had planned to do in 2020 initially um, is gone. So like we were, we were doing upgrades, we were gonna pa uh, finally pave our uh, lot and get some of the stuff that you know, we couldn't afford to do when we first opened, get them done. And that's all gone. Um, so now it's just a fight to keep our doors open and you know, move forward. Yeah, and this is a 50s diner. So it's not something that is best suited for takeout. It's an experience. Um, it very much is, right? Uh, we, we want people to come in and, you know, relive some of those memories and, and have new memories with their, you know, grandchildren because it's always funny to listen to the children because they're like, is this what it was like in the 80s? You know, they, they don't have no concept of time, so to, uh, to come in. But on this, it, and it is, it really is an experience to come and play the jukeboxes, you know, um, and to, to sit in the booths and to have that milkshake in that tin glass and our tin container, pardon me. Um, you know, and, and enjoy that. So, yeah, we, we were never, we never planned to ever do takeout. So, yeah. Now, the politicians have said, oh, well, just move to DoorDash, just do Uber Eats. That doesn't quite work out here in rural Alberta, does it? Um, no, because if anybody knows what, I mean, they're a business. They take a percentage. Um, if anybody knows the restaurant industry, we don't have huge profit margins so when they come in and want to take 18 percent um i i have no i have no profit on that so for me that's not an option um even just to have a local kid come in and do takeout 
you know, you have to pay them something. So am I giving them my profit? What is the purpose of doing take, uh, you know, delivery if I'm giving all my profit to somebody else? Now, let's talk about what brings me here today. Now, you're not open today. You've decided to go back to takeout only, but you did open your dining room in defiance of the lockdown measures. And I think between you and a handful of other restaurants, you brought the government back to the table and I think you changed policy. But what motivated that decision because you could get in some trouble for it? Um, <laughs> I, am, I, I like to follow the rules, um, but when you push me into a corner, I'm, I'm going to come out fighting. I mean, I'm not going to lay down and just let somebody roll over me. And it, it was getting to that point where I, th and um, so in January, in the middle of the month, when they didn't give us a clear definition of when we could open again, when they said you were closed till further notice, I mean, that was, you took away the goalpost. My husband likes to use that analogy. You know, they kept moving the goalpost. They took it away. They wouldn't give us when they were going to open us. There was no, all the hope was gone that, you know, in three weeks we were going to open up and things would kind of start to go back to normal. So our local government here was, was good. Um, our MLA, our mayor, you know, they supported us. And that was huge to know that we had the support. Um, and I won't say, speak for other restaurants here in town, but we have their support in a way. You know, we, I've had other restaurant owners come in and say, you know, kudos to you. You know, we couldn't, but I'm glad you did. So it needed to be done. Voices needed to be heard. And I don't think the government was listening. Um, and I think the general public need to understand what we are going through. You know, I've had a few people say, well, it's just a business you can close, you know, businesses close all the time, you'll be fine. It's not, it's a ripple effect. It's, I lose my business, all my employees lose their income. You know, what does it affect to them? Are they gonna lose their car? Are they gonna lose their house? Am I gonna lose my house? The driver that delivers my groceries, how does, where does he get his money from if he's not working? It's a ripple effect. It's not just this building closes its doors. It is so much bigger than that and I don't think the general public, or even our government, realizes what they are doing. Now, you and some other businesses who made that act of civil disobedience, you could face some pretty serious consequences. Sounds like Alberta Health Services is already starting to threaten you. Um, yes, we've, uh, and I can show you the email where we do have a closure notice on the last report that he wrote, and he's threatening to close us down. I don't know what that means. I haven't looked into it. I will. Um, be contacting lawyers and seeing what it is and what we will need to do. Um, I says it's kind of like losing your driver's license if you've never lost it. You know, what do I need to do to get it back? <laughs> so I don't want to lose my license. I don't, you know, I don't want to defy. I, I really don't. But you can't do to, you can't do this to people. You just can't. Oh, Jenny, I want to make a promise to you. If you do get a fine and if you need legal help, um, because AHS and maybe even the RCMP, although it sounds like the guys in town here are pretty good, pretty good customers of yours. Mm -hmm. If they do come down on you, please reach out to us through fightthefines.com. We want to help small businesses get back open. I think the act of civil disobedience between yourself and a handful of other restaurants, you really changed everything for everybody. You might have saved the entire industry and for sure rural Alberta <laughs> saved the big cities. But if you do get in trouble, please reach out to us. We'll help you at no cost to you. Oh, and that's, again, the support um, is just overwhelming. And you know, that, that means so much to us because sometimes legal fees and closures are, you know, something that we may not have been able to afford. So um, I've had a few people that have offered to help us pay fines or I had one guy said, if you need, I'll, I'll post your bail. So <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. <laughs> but like I said, um, I haven't actually been on social media um, this, the last few days just because it has been so overwhelming. My, uh, my phone has not stopped going off. 90% um, of it has, 99% of it has been so much positive. But it, it, it's, been, it's been tough even to take that because it's just so overwhelming. Um, and to, just to see our support and I am so thankful. I am so thankful to have that. Well, I think I speak on behalf of the very hungry public <laughs> that wants to get back to eating in restaurants. I want to thank you for this stand that you made. I want to let you get back to work because I know you have a takeout order waiting to go and then I want to place one too.
Perfect. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming up. This is just one more piece that, you know, people can see what we're doing and it's not just for the mighty dollar. I want to ask you why you came to Jenny's today. Uh, I came here to support Jenny and, uh, you know, being open and stuff, small businesses have been suffering for way too long. And I think that it's time that these businesses get the opportunity to get going, despite the um, uh, announcement yesterday. I think that it should have been open a long time ago. Uh, when you can go to a mall where there's 5,000 people or to a Walmart or a Costco, and then you can't safely come to a small diner like this, and you know, small businesses are going under every week, and it's, it's time that we get things opened up again. I believe that these pe places ha are shut down and I, it doesn't pay the bills. That's the bottom line. It just doesn't. And, you know, if it keeps going on, we're going to have everybody closed in town. What do you think of Jenny's stand the other day when she opened her dining room in contravention of the lockdown orders? You know what? I think it was time that people got together and actually took the stand. And, uh, you know, knowing Jenny, I kind of... I kind of thought that she'd be one of the ones to do it because uh, she's very practical and uh, her business needs to survive in this community. So um, I was really happy to see that Jenny was one of the people in the forefront to start opening. You know, you have to do what you have to do. Maybe it'll get it done. I don't know. Well, you heard it here. If Jenny gets in trouble for her act of civil disobedience. Rebel News is going to be here to help the very same way we're helping many other restaurants who made the same decision she did, that they were going to reopen for survival. Now, if you'd like to help fund our largest civil liberties project to date, helping businesses and individuals fight their ridiculous lockdown tickets, you can donate today at a special website, fightthefines.com. I cannot recommend Jenny's enough. It is immaculate. It is charming. And the food and the people are phenomenal. I know how great Bonneville is. So I know the community will continue to support Jenny as she fights for her business. And if you're a business in a lockdown jurisdiction closed by the government and you're making the decision to reopen for survival, please reach out to us at IWillOpen.com and let us tell your story. For Rebel News here in Bonneville, on day eight of my anti-hunger strike, full of breakfast poutine, milkshakes, and cake pops, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. If you've received one of those ridiculous lockdown tickets, I don't want you to pay it. I want you to fight it. Send it to us at fightthefines.com, and we'll put you in touch with a top criminal lawyer at no cost to you. And if you have not received a lockdown ticket, but you'd like to help fund our largest civil liberties project to date, fighting for civil liberties one lockdown ticket at a time, you can donate at that special website, fightthefines.com.